Good afternoon. Today is the 20th of July and uh, I'm here at um, GridServe which is just near Braintree in Essex for the launch of the 2021 MG5 EV long range. As you can see there's quite a few of them here, we've all been charged up but I have the key to this one and so I am going to be going for a little drive. We'll have a walk around of the car a little bit later on to see what the changes are between the one that I actually had last month on test from MG Motor UK and this uh, new version because there are a couple of changes and uh, some of them are going to be very significant. So let me get myself set up with the mount and uh, we'll go for a little drive. Just on the way out of uh, Gridsev now, passing by some other MG models and the car that I've actually come in today, which is my mother's 2017 Mercedes Benz C Class. So, as you can see, I'm uh, wearing my own channel merchandise today. Isn't that exciting, viewers? The big news about this car is not so much what you can see, it's, it's what you can't see. So, it still looks exactly the same. This isn't a facelift. This is really just like an, up, an upgrade, or I'd say it's more like this is a 2022 model as opposed to a 2021 in some ways. So the battery has been upgraded from 52.5 kilowatt hours to 61.1. Now that results in an increase in range from from. 214 miles on the WLTP cycle to 250 miles in the city that would be obviously even better. Because I've actually reviewed one of these cars so recently, I mean I've actually reviewed this, this MG5 twice before, obviously it wasn't a long range model. I think this hat nav lady is going to be a bit annoying because we're going to have to turn her off in a bit. Um, I've reviewed the car. Take the second exit onto A131 towards N11. I've reviewed the car twice, uh, but in December 2019, no, sorry, December 2020, on Tree Jacket Reviews, and also when I had one of these cars for the previous version of MG Motor UK. I have one of these cars from MG Motor UK. Um, actually, last month I had it for a week, the previous generation, the, the non long range one. Now, from what I understand, having spoken to the marketing team at MG Motor UK today, uh, the previous generation is no longer going to be um, sold anymore. They're, they're going to sell those off as quickly as they can, which of course, you know, makes perfect sense really. Um, the prices though have risen, uh, the car actually isn't under £25,000 anymore, which it was initially when it was launched. It uh, is now, it is now um, starting at £26,500 and rising for this um, exclusive version to uh, £29,000 but along, along with the uh, increased battery range the car also has MG Pilot and uh, I can see now it's telling me what the speed is and we've got the blue stalks on the, on the end of the cruise control and indicator the blue buttons and that means that the car actually now has the safety systems for the ZSEV and MGHS and I think a lot of people have been wanting to have that for quite some time in this car from the main criticisms of the MG5 when it first came out was it wasn't fitted with MG Pilot and so we've got all these safety suite here we've got uh, traffic sign recognition now lane keeping assist which is on at the moment um, got bicycle detection, pedestrian detection. I can see the lane keeping assist is working right now. I've got a little light to say that it's on. I'm just gonna change my driving mode into um, 
eco mode to, to extend the battery a little bit. I don't need to because, you know, I, for once, I'm not responsible for charging the car today. But uh, that's what I normally drive a car in. And uh, Regen, I'm going to leave on level two. There's a switch down here, KERS switch, which actually, um, which actually kind of gives me the uh, level of regen that I want in different situations, one, two, and three. So in town, definitely I, I want that on level three. Um, whereas on the road like this, uh, level one's probably fine. So we'll set the cruise control, which is here. And I've got adaptive cruise control as well. So I'm just going to set this. There we go. So we've got adaptive cruise control on now as well. It's fantastic. It rides very comfortable in, the, in one of these. For some reason it's now nine millimeters different. I don't understand why they've changed the ride up by nine millimeters. The other big change is the roof rails are now rated at 75 kilograms rather than um, 35 kilograms or previously it was 50 and then at some point it was nothing so it is a bit strange. Having spent a long time driving uh, one of these even during the last month uh, I know it's a very comfortable kind of motorway but having the lane keeping assist on and uh, the other safety features uh, pedestrian detection, bicycle detection, cross traffic alert at the back, choice of emergency braking, all this kind of stuff. It just gives this extra sense of reassurance. Obviously, you, you paid a price of that. The car has gone up in price, um, but not by too much. I mean, we're talking about between fifteen hundred and a thousand pounds, depending on depending on the specification. Obviously, this is the exclusive model, so we've got things like the uh, full leather interior. Um, power shock controls for all the windows and uh, reversing camera. Even the Excite model is very well equipped. Right, um, it's not really that interesting for me kind of driving along this, uh, this dual carriageway particularly. Uh, so I think we'll come back later and we'll have a look around the car in a little bit more detail. Well, you can tell we're on a press launch because that car in front of me at these lights is absolutely identical to the one I'm driving, apart from one digit on the number plate. Fascinating. That is really strange. I've just come across a Vauxhall Insignia in the outside lane where I am, and the car actually slowed down for me. It's now keeping me at a steady distance behind the insignia that's really weird and it's it's speeding the car up again for me now that the car's moved out of my way it's brilliant <laughs> it's, just, it's fantastic I, I don't think I've virtually used adaptive cruise control in a car like this before, I've used travelling assist in a Volkswagen ID3 for some reason on an empty ZSCV I didn't use this system because I, I don't know, I just didn't but uh, there we go. Right, it looks like we're going to come off the uh, A120 soon and we're going to be going onto some more challenging roads. And uh, I might flip the camera around to uh, have a look at that. Enter right, viewers. First exit. Still got the annoying sat nav lady because I, I'm afraid I have to have her on because I'm not too familiar with the roads of this part of the world, so I do apologise. Also, the, the audio might not be great because I forgot my got my microphone um, today which was very silly of me I shouldn't have done that Let's turn off the um, turn off the adaptive cruise control we don't need that anymore but we're going to sport mode now not to 60 in this car I think is unchanged from the previous version so it would be about 7.7 .7 seconds top speed 115 miles per hour I think the uh, the motor produces motor producers in this car about 155 horsepower. Now 
there were no indications in, in the press briefing that I'd been given that the power and acceleration have changed. But sport mode, beloved, obviously, of Mr. Quirk. So sport mode. Sport mode, beloved of uh, Mr. Quirk, of course, because it means you go much faster and exit. yeah the acceleration is brutal it's absolutely brutal so quick <laughs> yes i've just got to bear in mind that i i'm in a 40 limit here but after 400 yards turn right at the roundabout taking the third exit onto b184 then enter the roundabout so the, the traffic's on recognition is helping in this respect which you didn't have before it's Turn just right at the roundabout, taking the third exit, then enter the roundabout. Just a bit more of a complete package than it was before. So, yeah, sport mode is great, but given the target market for this car exit, and my own, then enter the roundabout. given the target market for this car and my own personal preference, I'm going to put it back in economy mode. Enter the I'm very privileged. Uh, to be on the launch event for the long range MG5 EV because of uh, Planet Auto and of course they were going to be here with me but they've had to self-isolate so uh, yes that is a bit of a shame. I've come to um, a local wine shop, I'm somewhere in the kind of Haverhill area, I don't know exactly where I am but it's, it's very nice around here but roads are a little bit of a problem but uh, you know never mind the mg5 um, ev long range um, looks externally pretty much the same as the um, one that was launched last year the biggest difference and this is an actual thing you can see change but the roof rails are now rated for 75 kilograms rather than um, 35 as they were before. Initially they were rated at 50 and then they weren't rated as anything but you know we'll skip over that bit that's not that important for most people. The back is also the same of course you get the standard seven year warranty at 80,000 miles. Reversing camera and parking sensors on this exclusive variant which costs just under £29,000. Now I've been given in here very kindly the uh, type 2 charger and also there is uh, the three pin or granny lead you can get a spare wheel in this this one's fitted with the inflation kit which is standard but you can also get a spare wheel thank you to one of my viewers who uh, reminded me of that the big size um, with the seats up like this is 464 litres there's also an LED boot light in here um, there are some metal tie down points as well um, which are on the back of the seats just down here. Again, thank you to one of my viewers who pointed that out to me. No electric tailgate or anything like that, but the sort of person who's looking at this car wouldn't be that fussed by that, sort of that shouldn't imagine. There we are, exclusive. The wheel size is uh, 16 inch, and that's the same for all MG5 EVs sold in this country. Keyless entry, of course, in this particular car. See the secret mission documents um, with lots of interesting notes in them into there. They go in the glove box quite nicely. The uh, trim in here is um, Artico leather, leatherette, whatever you want to call it. Got some nice MG floor mats for this particular example too. The door tops are hard, but then, you know, this car costs less than £30,000. You know, it's not really the biggest problem ever. I do like the surface of this, though. It's on the dash there. It looks very smart, and it, all the important things that you feel, like the, this, this handle and, and uh, you know, the, the exterior handles as well, they feel pretty good. Let's just move this University of Cambridge bag out of the way. And just get inside. Now, someone set a passenger seat in a silly place, but normally I have a lot more legroom than uh, than, uh, than usual in a car of this size. Plenty of headroom as well, like in ZSCV. You do get J 
just uh, very handy arm rest and some cup holders too. Twin USB sockets in the back and uh, some door bins as well. Right, the weather's turned unexpectedly epic on what is one of the hottest weeks of the year. So if we climb inside, I just want to show you very quickly what's different because I, I think most of you would have seen, and I had one of these um, actually on loan from Motor UK last month, the previous model, which wasn't long range. We'll see again, these materials are very nice. Motor gear selector. That button did do something in the early models of the MG5. It showed the battery range. Um, but now it's been blanked off because I think they've realised it's a bit redundant. KRS or regenerative braking switch. And then uh, there's a mode selector. Heating and ventilation controls are actually physical in this car, which I am very happy about. And here we have a storage compartment, which... Uh, Actually, it's sort of like there's a cover for the 12 volt socket and the two USB ports. Look at look at this slide like that. Oh, mmm, very nice viewers. Right, I've got the key on me. It's a keyless entry with a um, electronic handbrake in this car, so it's all very simple um, in terms of electric vehicles. Anyway, that's the way that it tend to go. So if we start this up. I'm just going to show, possibly in a, I didn't need to break actually, there we go, possibly in real time how long it takes for sat nav to load, because that's something that people have been asking me about, how long it takes for sat nav to load and see if it's any better in this uh, in this new uh, long range model, as you can see it, it does reflect a bit uh, when I'm holding my phone. Yeah, it's a quite quite a long boot up sequence there, viewers. Uh, right, navigation. So, I have a I had a pre-programmed test route. I haven't actually deviated from it. I just pulled up into um, the uh, little car park here at the uh, the the, uh, the the wine shop and whatever else is here. There we go. That's how long navigation taking. Accept. And there we are. It's. Um, it's uh, showing me where I am. So that's that's where I am, viewers. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's exactly where I am. But yeah, it does take a while. I'm not going to reprogram it because I don't want to lose the information on where I'm going. Um, but uh, yes, maybe we could try plugging my phone in and see if that works this time. So viewers, uh, you can see Android Auto, Apple CarPlay displayed up there. I connected uh, my phone um, to the USB port there. Uh, I'm going to have to pause a second whilst I connect the cable because I'm not sure I can actually do this um, with one hand. I might, it might take me two hands, so just pause one second. Okay, so you can see my phone is now connected to the car and it's currently charging, so that's fine. Now, I do have Android Auto installed on this and I use this in my Samuel Tivoli all the time. There you go, it says Android Auto connected to car. Right. See if this works. Please connect an Android phone. Please connect an Android phone to the car with USB cable to start using Android Auto. Well, it is. Um, now, I've heard from other people that this is actually just my phone, and so it's not a huge issue. Anyway, I mean, I, I can survive without that personally, but, uh, you know, just, just bear that in mind um, when you're choosing one of these. Let's have a look at some of the new features in the car, then. So, um, we've actually got a lane assist system now. Um, I can alert, or I can put it onto lane keeping. I can uh, do what I like, or departure assist. We can have lane departure warning or lane keeping, depending on what we want. Audible alert, on or off. Sensitivity is on normal, I'm not going to fiddle with that. Uh, MG pilot, look at all the other stuff. You know, oh, it, it, should, it should show some more stuff on there other than what the settings are but I think perhaps although four collision systems well we've got that on and assist mode emergency braking so that's all very handy yeah you should see the blue buttons on the end of these stalks here which indicate this car's got MG pilot uh, so yeah with lane keeping assist that wasn't there no it was MG pilot um, but if we look at the main screen now here we can see we, we can change um, the 
level of regen braking because we're on seventy eight percent battery. Now, if you're on one hundred percent battery, you can't have level three regen. Just so, just so you know. Uh, we'd also change the mode we're in here. And we can put it normal sport mode, back from normal then to economy mode, and those will give us various battery ranges from one hundred eighty miles, one hundred seventy two miles, and sport mode one hundred sixty four. There we go. Right. Um, I'll see if also I can sort of look through uh, some of the uh, extra features in here. Digital speed. There's my efficiency actually. I'm doing four miles per kilowatt hour. This car's only rated at 3.6. That's very good. Um, total, this car's only done 100 and. Uh, 112 miles since the last reset, 164 in total, so it's really new. I've done 42 miles myself in it. So we can go over here, look at this sort of uh, bit here. This is via the MG Pilot. Uh, if I were driving, it would all show on here, but yeah, I'm actually not. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's only me today, otherwise, you'd probably get a shot of that from someone who was in the passenger seat, but sadly not. Okay, let's uh, let's return to um, the uh, grid serve and uh, actually have a look at something else before we finish. So here we are driving through Thaxted in Essex. Um, it's a very pretty little town. I think James Martin from JM on cars actually just a lot of his filming around here because he actually lives in this area. So you might have seen this area on um, some of his videos. Still a very manageable car in town. Uh, visibility of the front particularly is very good. Uh, reversing camera at the back in this exclusive model. Doesn't feel too big to sort of pilot around. Mirrors are a good size. And uh, because we haven't got any form of, you know, gear ratios to change, it's very quiet and sort of convenient. It does make an interesting little noise when you're outside and you hear it moving around. That's, uh, you know, an EU mandated thing, I think. Not, of course, that we're in the European Union anymore, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, I can hear it making the noise actually from inside the car. Sort of spaceship type noise. A lot of people looking at this wouldn't even be aware it was an electric car. But yeah, it's just. Um, Ambling along past all these beautiful old houses, thatched cottages, and things like that, which I'm sure looks very good on camera. I mean, I've got my mounts in the way because, well, it just always is. That's just the way it goes on this channel. Um, but nevertheless, it's a nice backdrop for all of you. And I can see uh, as, as well that it's being aware of the traffic signs and keeping me in the lanes when it uh, can read the uh, lines properly, it's sort of quite pleasant really. Right viewers, you might think this is a, a completely irrelevant comparison, but this is my mother's car that I've come in today. I I'm using it at the moment because uh, she's not really still able to drive and um, it needs a good long run uh, once in a while, so I've given it a good long run. It's about 100 and 25 miles um, from where she lives to here, so why not? Um, there's actually quite a few interesting comparisons with this. So this is a 2017 Mercedes-Benz C200 Sport Estate. Um, the car, when it was new, the list price of this was about £35,000. But because this car is such low mileage and the used car market is quite high at the moment, you can buy one of these for about £22,000. So it's a little bit cheaper than an MG5 EV, but still, you know, it, it's it's uh, holding its value quite well. It's a two-litre um, turbocharged engine with 184 horsepower, and um, the miles per gallon that I've been getting out of this uh, recently is about 44. The uh, MG5 EV on the test run today did about four um, miles per kilowatt hour. So the space inside the car is, is interesting because the floor is a lot lower in this. It's a much lower car to get in and out of. 
the infotainment system is quite complicated when you look at it first of all. Um, I'll just turn the car on so that you can see. There we go. Good old combustion power. Shut the door because it's really warm out here. I hope my phone doesn't just connect to the thing. If it does, I'll put it on mute. It's actually controlled by this rotary dialer here. There's no Android Auto, uh, there's no Apple CarPlay, nothing like that. This is an old, obviously, uh, the car that's four years old now, but it has only done 17,000 miles, so it, it's looking very, looking very clean. Let's just mute that, there we go. Mute, thank you. Um, dual zone climate control, you don't get that on, on the MG5. You don't get the B as well. Something that my mother loves about this car. Panoramic roof. Both cars have article leather and uh, electric seats. Uh, this particular car has them on driver and passenger side with a memory function. Um, automatic gearbox, of course, in this. And uh, there is a mode selector too here. The car is currently in eco mode, but you can also push it between comfort, sport, sport plus, and individual. I'm going to put it back into eco mode. And there are um, different settings for things like the uh, steering and things like that, as you can see from this touchscreen. It's not a touchscreen, not touchscreen. It's a rotary dial. This thing takes a lot to, of getting used to. Um, I ha obviously, my mother's had this car for years now, so it's quite possible. But if it, you can see just the steering, you can put the steering into to different modes. And uh, you can play around with that and stuff. We, 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 you don't really want the steering in comfort mode in this car. It's too light, way too light. If you drive the MG5 in sport mode, that's also very good. One thing you do realise is actually the car's quite low. And if, if um, I'll climb in the back in a second, and I'll show you just how much leg room there isn't. Actually, um, I'm not even going to climb in the back because like, it'll be pointless because <laughs> there's enough, there's no room at all. Um, an MG5, that's really not a problem. And this is a, an issue with this car is that there's not as much space as you'd think there'd be. I mean, it looks very nice. It, this is a lovely colour and everything. And it's got the electric tailgate, which takes a long time to put up. But the boot in this is actually smaller than the MG5 EV is as well. My mother, if she were to consider getting a different car, I mean, she doesn't want to at the moment, she's really doing any miles in this, but, and it's not depreciated particularly, particularly fast, she actually um, would be uh, maybe better off getting an electric car, I have to say this, but she probably would be. But, you know, they, in the Mercedes range, they cost an awful lot of money. And, you know, this car costs an awful lot to service. It can cost up to £700 a year. To service this car through the official Mercedes-Benz dealer network, whereas an MG5 EV, it really won't cost that much, even through the MG's official dealer network. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a lovely car and it's lovely to drive, but if you're thinking about long-term costs and all that sort of stuff, should you buy one, use one of these, or a new MG5 EV? It's just something to consider. I just thought I'd capture um, some BMG pilot systems working here. So I've currently got the cruise control set to 50 miles per hour, but I'm actually doing about 30 miles per hour. And it's because this DS3 in front of me is accelerating and braking, and the car's actually accelerating and braking in tandem with the, uh, the DS3 because the energy pilot system is working, the adaptive cruise is working and it's, it's, it's actually slowing me down for the front of the car. I'm not, that, that initial bit wasn't me. Obviously I'm keeping my foot on the brake because I'm not an idiot and I don't want to crash into the roundabout or something but I just thought I'd give you a demonstration of it. So I think what it will do is it will bring me back up to speed again if I just resume. There we go, resume. And it's accelerating back up to 50. You can see the uh, DS3 is still there, and 
the lorries in front of it aren't actually doing 50, so it's going to slow me down when I get, you know, too close. So that's actually what it's already doing. It's slowing me down to 45 miles an hour, and it's keep 43, and it's keeping me here. This is really good on a car that costs less than thirty thousand pounds, which of course, which of course all models of the range do. I think that's remarkably good. Just in case you're wondering where the charging flap was, viewers, it is here on the front, like uh, on this car, but that is the one that I've been driving. Not that uh, you necessarily know unless you take very close attention to registration numbers. Me down again. That Citroen has now gone. I can, I can feel the pedal actually moving. Take the second it's exit. remarkable. Um, and now I think we're, yeah, we're at three again and off it goes. After half a mile, go over the roundabout. This is really strange. Just, this car can almost drive itself. It's, instead of got adaptive cruise control set at 50 and it's speeding up behind the lorry now and then it will slow me down again. So it's almost like you don't even need to have a driver behind the wheel of this, of course you do. And this isn't level 4 autonomy or anything like that. But it is really impressive for the price of the car. I think I'll switch this off actually now because it's, it's starting to slightly unnerve me. <laughs> Well viewers, so uh, we're back at Grid Surf Dow and uh, plug my headphones in just to get slightly better audio quality. Just going to consult my secret mission documents to make sure that we've got all the essential information covered here. So the 2021 MG5 EV long range. The most popular uh, C segment estate car um, apparently based on this year is the Toyota Corolla Sports Touring. That's a uh, sort of... Um, standard hybrid type car and it's actually more expensive than this is. The battery on this long range version compared to the previous car it's gone up from 52.5 kilowatt hours to 61.1. The range has increased from 214 to 250 miles on the combined WLTP cycle. 80% charge uh, from 10% on a 100 kilowatt CCS charger in 40 minutes. We've now got MG Pilot as we've demonstrated. Uh, it's also been lowered by nine insurance groups due to the fact we've got MG Pilot. The range starts at £26,495 uh, with, without metallic paint of course, so this, this car has metallic paint, and rises to £28,995 after the government grant. The roof rails are now rated at 75 kilograms. Other than that, the car remains largely the same. It's a very appealing package. Certainly uh, the one thing that was lucky. We didn't say too much at the time during the time I had one of these for um, a, a review for a week, uh, or actually during the Tweed Jacket Reviews episode we did in December back at Summit Garage, um, was that I thought really it could do with a few more safety features to appeal to the broadest type of person. And now we've got the extra safety features. I, I would like a panoramic sunroof as well. It is a little bit dark in here, um, but apart from that, it's very good. The facelifted car at some point will come out. This isn't a facelift really, it's just a, uh, a, a, a an improvement in under the skin technology I would put it as, but uh, there we go. Um, so thank you for watching um, this video. I hope you enjoyed the comparison as well uh, with my mother's Mercedes because it is an interesting thing to think about um, if you're coming from a combustion car. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you again to MG Motor UK for inviting me to the launch. Thank you to Planet Auto as well, um, who I was going to be part of um, in actually, uh, you know, um, having to review the car, but I've had to do everything myself, which uh, I don't know if it's turned out very well. Obviously, you'll have to let me know if it has. Um, but yes, social media links are down below, and uh, please do consider turning on notifications to be informed when you upload. Thank you ever so much indeed once again.